So once you've installed the uh, Python and Genie for this class, you can start writing code, okay? Any file that you create, it has to end with a .py file. That is the extension of Python files. Like remember your doc files are .doc or .docx or PDF files are .pdf and so on, jpgs, bmps and so on. Similarly, your Python files will be stored as .py files. When you save a file, always give it a name dot py you have to explicitly give it dot py in in genie okay and then obviously uh, i tell students to create a folder for this class first then in this folder create subfolders for one per program okay you can also i've seen students do it organize it more better that you say uh, Inside the class folder, you have weekly folders. Inside the weekly folders, you have each unit or each type of exercise that you're doing. Point being that you should organize your Python files. Don't store everything on desktop or don't store everything somewhere else. Uh, store files in a given folder so it's easier for you to find later and look because Sometimes you have to copy paste things from older code to the newer and it makes your job or life easier, okay? A program can consist of several PY files, Python files. Uh, but I think in this class, we only deal with one file uh, mostly, okay? So you can think, uh, I mean, just remember that you can have several files, but for our sake, we will usually have only one file. And the next step is always back up your files. At the end of the semester, if you come to me and say, oh, all my f work is lost, well, I'm not responsible, okay? You are the responsible entity. Make sure that you back up your files to a cloud, network drive, USB, whatever, right? Do not say that, oh, all my work is lost. Not my problem, okay? So remember that. So let's look at the first program. So once you have installed Genie, type the first two lines. Hash sign, my first Python program, Write the word print, parentheses, quotes, hello world, exclamation mark, quotes, parentheses closed. Save your file, control S or command S on Mac and give it a name, hello.py, give it the full name with the .py extension. If you do not, it will not run, okay? And remember it's case sensitive, so don't write print in capital P or R and so on. Here you can write anything, whatever you write inside quotes is thrown to the screen as is, okay? So what this program does is that it's one or more lines. In this case, the first line is a comment because it starts with a hash sign. Any line that starts with a hash sign is a comment telling the reader, let's say you've written your file, hello.py, you close it, you come after a year, you open the same file. Well, what does this file do, right? So you write different types of comments throughout the file. That, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Why? Because as you will go along, you will understand that large pieces of software are not a one-man job, right? So for, for example, in Microsoft, hundreds and thousands of people work. Does everybody know each other's code? No. Even in people working in the same team, they don't know each other's code, right? So how can one person, if he leaves the job, a new person comes in, how is he supposed to understand the last person's code? So for that, you need to write code, uh, like uh, comments in your code that tell Anybody reading the code that what these sets of lines are going to do. 
So for that, we write a comment saying that this is my first Python program. Okay. Then the next line is what contains a statement. That statement in this case is, and this is a lowercase p, here's a typo, print hello world. It should actually be this thing. Okay. Print hello world means that print something to the screen. In our case, we said that is hello world with an exclamation mark. Anything that's written inside quotes in the parentheses is thrown to the screen as is. Here, hello world exclamation will be sent to the screen. Okay. So the print function has many different options. You can write a pr empty print and it will print an empty line. You can have multiple values. You can have value one alone, as in this case, print has only one value inside quotes. Or you can have multiple values in the print statement. For example, print, the answer is comma something. So comma signifies another value. Okay. So the answer is will be thrown to the screen as is. And then you put a comma and then you write something without quotes. So that's the thing to remember about print is anything that you write inside quotes is thrown to the screen as is. While anything that's written without quotes is computed. Okay. okay. So this, the answer is, goes to the screen as is. Anything else that is not in quotes after the comma is computed. So it will say the answer is, the CPU will compute this. Answer becomes 13. It will put 13 here on the screen. You will say, see, the answer is 13. And then you put another comma and you put another set of quotes with something in them. So the answer is 13, which is computed, exclamation mark, will be thrown out to the screen. So if you put two spaces after answer or put a, like a five spaces, you will see on the screen it will print that thing. Okay. So I advise you to write this also in the same program after this line, lowercase p, after this line, do that. Then run the whole program and see what happens. You will see hello world exclamation in the first line. The second line on the screen will be the answer is 13 exclamation mark. And then you can play around with the spaces and so on and see how these things work. Again, um, write more code. The more you write, the better you will get. Okay. Then the first line says that print is a Python function. Okay. What is a Python function? So functions are sets of instructions that you tell Python to do, and it will do that. So Python has pre-written code, and it knows what to do. Okay. So we just simply tell the uh, Python compiler print something. The compiler knows that when you say print with a parentheses, it has to mean something. It has to do, the compiler has to do something. What is that something? In case of the print function, it is take whatever the user is saying, take it to the screen in whichever format the user wants. The user wants to print an empty line. The user wants a single value or multiple values. So the compiler knows what the print function is supposed to do. And this code is already pre-written in the compiler by the uh, Van Rossum, the, uh, the guy who invented Python, right? And then since then there have been many additions, but that's what somebody wrote code that if the user writes print, you have to take it to the monitor, okay? Now you can imagine that's a long sets of instructions, but in our case, we just say print, and that just happens like magic, right? But in actuality, there is 
series of code that's written for that okay then this is just variations of that print function i advise you to read slide play with these things and see what happens with them and then try to understand why is something happening right when you say print three plus four without quotes execute this line all you see on the screen will be seven why is that think about it right because remember anything in quotes without quotes is computed so it will compute three plus four meaning seven and you tell the compiler to print seven so all you see on the screen is seven similarly if you give something in quotes that is thrown to the screen as is and then something is being computed so you will see this thing the answer is 42 with again lowercase t this is a typo here but again play with these things and you will know play with this and see what happens right this uh, prints two lines of text because the first line is printed oh, by the way so after print what the print function does is that it prints something on the screen and takes the cursor to the next line hence in this case you will take see two lines one line will be hello the other will be word because after the compiler prints, it takes the cursor to the next line and then it prints word. That's how the print function is executed. So then <clears throat> execute this program of these sets of instructions and see what happens. And definitely and please do that. That's the only way you can learn. I have told you everything. You've read the slides. But unless you write code, you will not learn. Please write code. Okay.